Hi, everybody. My name is Freddie Dubon. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quick so we can get started. Let me just make sure that you're able to see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, I can I see, it. see it. Uh, are you able to see the portal, the Azure portal? Is that what you're seeing at the moment? Yes. OK, perfect. Let me. Make sure that we have the right slides on the screen. OK. All right. So again, hi, everybody. Freddie Dubon. Um, my name is Freddie Dubon. I'm an um, Azure Technical Specialist with Microsoft. I specialize in infrastructure. So I focus on everything that has to do with infrastructure, everything that has to do with express routes. Azure Arc is one of the services, one of the areas that I focus on as well. So hopefully today I'll be able to give you an, not only an overview of Azure Arc, but a little bit more information on how the Azure Arc service works. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any, <clears throat> excuse me, anything that needs clarification, please stop me. That'll give me the opportunity to take a, a, a take a, a quick break and also be able to make this interactive. So I would appreciate questions. I appreciate comments so we can make this interactive. This is for you to make sure that you, at the end of the presentation, you understand the service, you understand how it works and how it can benefit you or your customers or you know things that you're doing. When we talk about Azure Arc, we are actually talking about a hybrid environment. Uh, when we talk about hybrid environment, we're talking about things that live either on-prem, things that live in other clouds. Typically, you, know, you have things that are living in maybe in AWS or Google Cloud, or Oracle, IBM, it doesn't really matter where they live. They can be on-prem um, servers, databases, you know, containers, anything that lives on-prem that is running on a server or things that are running in other clouds, all of that can be part of this Azure Arc hybrid system that, that, we look, that, we, that we're gonna be looking at today. And what it, the goal is that it gives you a single pane of glass, right? A single control plane that you can use to control or to manage or to be able to visualize those systems that are on-prem or in other clouds as well. One of the main things right now is updates, right? So if you're, if you're looking at keeping updates or keeping an inventory of your systems, this is a, a way that you can do that. In addition to a lot of other things that you can do, as you will see, um, in, in a minute. One of the main things also is, is government uh, governance. You know, so if you want to make sure that you, you have the same type of policies applied to systems across different areas, different environments, you can do that with Azure Arc as well. So when we, again, this is all part of that hybrid environment that we've been talking about. Again, doesn't matter if it's in other clouds, doesn't matter if it's on-prem or um, it really, all of that can be part of this Azure Arc uh, infrastructure that, that we talk about. So again, the idea is that you can manage it from one, one single place, one, one location, which would be your Azure portal, as I will show you in a minute. Again, I apologize if my voice is a little raspy. I've been fighting with the cold over the weekend, so, um, so I apologize about that. Again, if you have any questions, please stop me so that I can clarify any of this information here. So again, complexity is one of the key things. When you have multiple environments, you have to have multiple different ways to manage those systems, right? So if you go, uh, if you have systems that are living on-prem, then you have to manage those a certain way. If you have systems living in, in Azure, you manage those a little bit different. Um, so again, compliance is another thing that you have to deal with and regulations and there's and that creates inconsistency in this in the environments because now you have to manage them differently you have sometimes you have even different teams that manage the systems that are living on-prem and also in in the cloud so azure arc tries to keep that to simplify that and make sure that everything comes into one area one place so Again, a lot of this stuff that, that we've been talking about, um, it's, it's all part of Azure Arc. I am a technical guy myself, so I kind of like to jump into the weeds right away. 
And I like the slides. I appreciate the slides, but in reality, I kind of like to jump into the portal and show you what Azure Arc looks like and what it does. And if it's okay with you, I would like to get into that um, right away. Again, just so that you can see how it is and, and how it works. So let me go ahead and show you that really quick. So when we look at the Azure Arc, what it is in, as, in a nutshell is, is a way that you can bring a system into the Azure portal. What do I mean by that? Let me, let me show you a system that I have here. And this is running on my computer. This is a Windows server. Let me go ahead and maximize the screen. So this, this system here, it is a Windows 2012. Uh, I use this for other purposes, not just for, for Azure Arc, but it's Azure Arc and also the ESUs that we've been you know, dealing with, which is all licensing and things like that. So anyway, so this is a Windows server. Um, this is this could be an on-prem server, could be in, like I said, in other clouds. And you want to bring this server into the Azure portal. So the idea is that what you're going to do, excuse me, is you're going to install an agent on this server. This agent is going to allow you to take this server and make it part of the Azure portal. How will this server show up? Uh, let me go ahead and minimize the screen here. If I can, yeah. Yes. Okay, so when I look at my Azure portal, the Azure portal has an area called Azure Arc. When I look at the Azure Arc, I look at the machines. And this machine here is that machine that I just showed you. It shows that it's connected, and it shows that it's part of a resource group, and it shows that it's part of a subscription. It tells you what operating system is running. And it gives you a lot of information right off, you know, right off the bat. It gives you all the information about the platform of the server that is running. So what does this mean? This means that now this, this server, because it is an object in my portal, I can treat it just like I would treat any other VM. Uh, what does this mean? That, uh, this means that if I click on it, I can add extensions to it, just like I would do, add extensions to any other VM. What, what type of extensions I can add? I can add the Azure monitoring agent. So I can start monitoring this server that is on-prem. So if I click add, um, I can, like I said, I can add the Azure monitor extension. What this gives me is it gives me the ability to be able to monitor this server, just like I would monitor any other VM. Um, what else I can do? I can, besides, you know, I can, we'll go back to the monitoring in a minute, but I can, also add extensions such as the network watcher. Network watcher is it's it's a it's a huge thing um, because it allows you to do a ping monitor. A lot of customers want to do ping. They they like that capability to be able to do a ping test between devices. So now with with this system being Arc enabled, I can add the network watcher extension and I can do a ping monitor between a cloud VM and an on-prem system or vice versa. So I can treat this system just like I would treat any other VM. So this right here gives me that ability. And so this server comes into the Azure portal and now I'm able to, to do a lot of things that I couldn't do before, right? Again, this is a management capability that I didn't have before. So how do I add a system to this Arc area? Um, typically, what I would do is, let's say I decide, well, yeah, this is a great idea. I would like to do Azure Arc so I can bring my machines that are on-prem or the machines that are running in other clouds. I would like to bring them all in and manage them from the Azure portal. So I can click and add. This gives me the ability to be able to add a machine. So I can just say add a machine. So here what it does, it says, it gives you the option to do one server or to do multiple servers. And the difference is, let me go ahead and do one server. When you do one server, what it does in, okay, so it gives you the ability to choose the resource group where you want to add this machine. Uh, the nice thing about being able to have this flexibility is that you can, you can 
arrange servers in different resource groups. Uh, maybe you want to separate permissions. Maybe you want to be able to delegate um, the management of the systems. Maybe you have multiple locations. Maybe, maybe you have a location in the East Coast, a location in the West Coast. You can put them in different resource group and you can delegate the permissions of those resource groups to somebody else. So this gives you the ability to choose which resource group this machine is gonna be in. You can select the region, um, let's just say US East, the operating system, and then um, it gives you the connectivity method. So this right here is very important. And the reason it's important is because it says public endpoint. Public endpoint just means the machine where I'm gonna install this agent has a direct connection out to the internet. So it can keep that connection open to the Azure portal. If that's not the case, I can also set up a proxy server, a proxy server with a URL. What that means is that now I, that this machine does not need a connection out to the internet. I can have a centralized server that can do that connection. A lot of customers like this so that they can keep all the servers um, inside and only the proxy server has access to the Azure portal. So from the firewall point of view, you can open ports on the firewall only for the proxy server. You don't need to op open the ports to every single server. Now you're centralizing that, that connection. Or you can do a private endpoint. If you wanna keep everything, let's say you have an, an express route, so you have a VPN connection to the Azure environment, you can use that private endpoint as well. So it really depends on how you want to do it. Um, again, the Azure Arc is the one that, oops, excuse me. The Azure Arc agent is the one that needs access to, um, to, that, to those endpoints. So sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead and do this again. I went too far. So for this one, I'm going to do public endpoint. And then I'm going to do next. The next thing I'm going to be able to do is I can set up tags. These are tags just like any other VM that, that, that you want to have. And the next thing is you can download the script. So what it does is it creates a script for you. And it gives all this, the information that it needs, all the resource group information, the tenant ID, the location. All of that information is here. Yeah, is there a question? Okay. Uh, so it gives you everything that you need to be able to onboard this machine into the Azure portal. The way that it works is um, it's going to prompt you to log in. So the user that you're going to use is a user that needs to be a, that needs to have permissions to be able to onboard a machine. So when you do one machine, like I'm doing here, you are going to be prompted for for a username and password. And that username and password that you use needs to have permissions to be able to onboard that machine. So you can click a download here and it'll download a, PS, uh, a PS1 script, or you can just copy that to a clipboard. When you, when you copy it to a clipboard, then the next thing you do is you go to the machine itself. You can either copy it or you can send it to somebody. And here is the script that you would run. Again, it's the same script that I just showed you. Uh, this is just for one machine. And what it does is it goes to this, if you notice, it says invo invoke web request. It goes to this link. And then once it goes to this link, it's gonna ask you to log in. When you enter the username and password, this is how this machine is gonna be onboarded. Any questions? Okay. So if you have multiple, the, the, the main difference between one server and multiple servers is that when you do multiple servers, so I'm gonna go back to machines, add. And when you do multiple machines, you are not going to be prompted for a username and password, right? Because you don't want to be prompted for a username and password because of course you're not gonna be sitting in front of this, in front of the machines. So what it gives you is it gives you the ability to create a service principle. The service principle is the one that is going to be used to onboard the machines. When you say, I want to use a service principle and you can create a new one, this service principle is going to have um, the permissions that it needs, but it's also, it also has a time limit. So when you click on create now, 
it's going to ask you for the name. It's going to ask you for what, what is the scope. You can set up the scope at a resource group level. And then it also gives you this expiration time. So you can set it for one day, one week, one month, or custom. So this right here is important because you can set it up. You can set up this uh, service principle to expire. Once you do this onboarding, you don't need the service principle anymore. So at that point, that service principle can go away and it should go away. Excuse me, for security purposes. That is the main difference when you do multiple servers. Um, when you download the script, you can deploy the script using a GPO. You can, you know, there's different methods of how you can deploy this, this, this uh, script, how you can onboard servers. When you onboard a server, once you finish with the script, the way that it shows up in your environment, again, it goes to, if you go to the Azure Arc under machines, you're going to be able to see the, the machine name and it's gonna show you that it's connected. It's gonna show you the resource group and, and all of this information here. So this is how you, you're able to see the, the on-prem server or the server in other clouds. It'll just show up here in this area. And then from here, you can manage it. You can do, like I said, you can include the Azure monitor, monitoring agent. You can, um, at that point, apply policies. Um, policies is one of the things that typically is one of the things that customers like to, uh, like to apply just because that way they can keep the policies the same across different environments. Again, another thing is you can apply extensions. One of the things that I mentioned is you can add the Azure monitoring uh, extension and also the network watcher agent for Windows. Uh, in this case, you can do that. You can click next and review and create, and it'll go through and it'll and install the network watcher agent. At that point, you can uh, use this as a target or use this as a as a source. Um, no registers, resource. Maybe this is not even a Windows. Oh, it is a Windows. That request. Uh, the location, because I'm in a different, um, I, since the live demo, I didn't plan to do this, but sorry about that. It's in a different zone, because this is West US 3 and the other one is in the US, so it, it gave me an error message. So the ARC, um, again, the ARC agent, what it does is it gives you the ability to bring this into this area here. So now when you look at the ARC, um, uh, the arc section, there's also other options that you have. So for example, if you have a Kubernetes cluster on-prem, you can bring that in also with using the arc agent, VMware, vCenters, SQL servers as well. So all of that is part of this Azure arc environment. And so all of that is part of this, um, environment that the, the main thing again is the ability to be able to manage everything from one central location. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at lately is bringing customers that will, that have Windows 2012 that would like to take advantage of the ESU, which is the extended security updates for the licensing. That's one of the things that you will see here under management is this is extended security updates. So when you onboard a server into the Azure portal, if it's a Windows 2012, like you see here, which is a Windows 2012 R2 standard, if you um, want to enable it uh, for the extended security updates, you click here under extended security updates. You have license, you can create licenses. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create one really quick just to show you, uh, like, like any other Azure a resource, you always have to choose a resource group and you have to give the license a name. Test, uh, I'm gonna make it 45. And typically um, when you say activate now, that's when the billing starts. So usually I like to say activate later until I'm ready for that. And then you set up, select the region 
and then you select the SKU, which in this case is 2012. And I can do physical course, and then I can set up the, the amount of course that I want. So in this case, I can say two, two cores, that would be four, but because there's a minimum of eight, so I'm gonna go ahead and do four. And, uh, oh, for physical is 16, sorry. So I'm gonna do one here. So when you do that, and then you can check here to say that you have the software assurance and you can create. When you create the license, what it does, is it just creates a container like this, a license that is not activated, just shows the activated. When you click on it, then at that point, you can activate it by clicking at uh, the edit button. And then you can activate it here. And once you save it, that license becomes active and then you can apply it. The way that you apply it is you click on eligible resources up here. And then in this case, it shows that I have one. It's already enabled because I already did it, but usually you would just click on it and then you say enable ESU. And then here it will show you the license that you have activated. In this case, physical and here is my license. And then I would just say enable. So there is a couple steps that you have to take, um, but that's, this is how you take advantage of the ESUs. And once you do that, what it does is it keeps that, that license active on this server. So the ARC agent, what it's doing is just sending the heartbeat across and it's checking to make sure that you're licensed. Uh, this needs to be connected once a month. So you don't need to be connected all the time. This um, ARC enable system can go away for a few days or a few weeks, but it needs to be connected at least once a month for that, for that license to be, to be checked to make sure that you still, um, that you still have it enabled. And once that happens, then you can apply the updates. And this is the same as uh, not just for ESUs, but Azure Arc overall. The, the system needs to connect at least once a month to be able to get keep that connection. Although it is recommended that you keep it connected all the time just to make sure that you're... The whole idea of bringing it on, on board is so that you can manage it, right? So if you have the monitoring agent, of course, you're going to be checking CPU utilization. You're going to be checking memory utilization. Maybe you want to check the drives. Uh, you want to see how how the hard drives are doing, if you have any any error messages, maybe you have some, some things in the disk queue length that, that could potentially show you that the drive is not fast enough, you know, things like that. Um, now you can centralize that monitoring from within the Azure portal without having to have two different systems, one for on-prem and one for the cloud. So now if I go to, um, actually I did not include, so this right here, if I go to, uh, let me see, did I do this? Okay, yeah. And let me look at my extensions here. Let me see if I can add the Azure monitor, monitoring extension. Here's the Azure monitoring or Azure monitor. Let me go ahead and add that. And next. And let's see if it let's see if it works. And while we wait, any questions? Any comments? Hey, Freddie, this is uh, Adam. I have a question for you. Yeah, tell me. <clears throat> I, I'm curious, um, kind of using one of the examples you brought up in the beginning, where you may have a database on-prem, um, is there a way to set things up? Let's say you have a one colo with a, a database in it, and then it's got a failover location in another colo. So you wanted to add both those machines into this Azure Arc capability, is there actually a way to manage a disaster recovery type event through 
this process? So this has a recovery in the sense of the server itself or the database itself? Um, I would think the server. So if, the, if one of the servers is generally set to sort of a standby mode, uh -huh. um, but maybe a but maybe you have data replicating to it, so it's not it's not publicly accessible or even privately accessible, but data yeah. is being replicated over to it. But in the event, maybe you're monitoring your production environment, something went wrong, and you you want to bring your other environment online. Is there a way to manage some of that activity through this portal? So the one of the things, let me see if this will answer your question. One of the things that while we wait for this to happen, one of the things that we have in Azure is something that we call a, um, like runbooks or playbooks. So when you go into the automation accounts and you can create an automation account, let me go ahead and create one really quick. Uh, test, uh, one, two, three, four. So when you create an automation account, there's a, a way that you can create um, automation steps that can be taken. Um, once you onboard a system using Arc, you can take advantage of those playbooks or run books. So you could do a lot using this type of uh, configuration. Um, so, so for example, in this case, the run book. If you create a run book, you can say uh, either via PowerShell, you know, you can uh, click here and let me go back to the automation accounts. Here is my automation account that I just created. And so from here, when you when you take advantage of, of, of the Azure Arc, there, the Azure Arc enabled systems will show up here. So you gotcha. can use this to be able to do a lot of that automation that, that you're talking about. Very cool. I don't know if that, um, so we, you know, we can go in a little bit more into the details um, if, if you would like, but um, that, that would be one way that I can think of. No, I, I don't necessarily think that's necessary. I was just trying to think through Mm -hmm. um, potentially a common use case in which people may want or have on-prem infrastructure, but they would want to, yeah. they would still need to manage that infrastructure. Right. And that, right. that would be an example that I could think of. Correct. So. Yep. 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 Totally. Yep. So, Thank you. yeah, no problem. So anyway, going back to this, I think it's finished. So let's go ahead and look at this under Azure Arc. Here's my machine. And when I look at the extensions, it says that now it has the Azure monitoring agent installed. So I didn't have to do it from the machine itself. I can just add the extension. And now I have this here. If I have a lot of servers that I want to do this on, I can create a policy. And that policy will deploy the Azure Arc, excuse me, the Azure monitoring agent to all the machines. So I don't have to do this manually on every single one of them. I can just create a policy, excuse me, and the policy will install the Azure monitoring agent on all the machines that you have. So that's another thing, another way that you can automate this process if you have a lot of machines. But once that Azure, um, the monitoring agent is installed, um, if you go to monitoring, you have uh, the ability to to enable insights on this machine. So I can just do enable. And when I enable the, the insights, what I can do is I can allow the system to create the data collection rule automatically, or I can create it myself. So I'm going to call it test, FMD one, two, three. And then I'm going to select the log analytics workspace that I wanna use. In this case, I can say log workspace West US3, which is the one that I use all the time when I do this. So I can just say create, and it'll create that using that log analytics workspace that I have enabled or that I have created. So you can see that 
the way that I'm managing this is exactly the same that I would manage a VM. When I enable the insights on a VM, I do the exact same thing. When I enable insights on an Arc enable system, it's exactly the same way. So again, it gives you that capability to be able to do things the same way. So you don't have to create one system for on-prem servers and one system for cloud environments. This is this gives you that consolidated, that centralized way of doing things. Same thing with the logs. You can send them to a log analytics workspace. You can select the log analytics workspace that you want to use. And sorry about that. I went too far. I was waiting. Okay, let's see if insights show up. Okay. Analyze the data. And there it is. It's it says error retrieving data because it just I just enabled it. So it needs a little bit of time to, to gather some of this data. But again, as you can see, the idea is that you're not man you're managing everything from one central location. Same thing with the logs, same thing with with the um, um with with the log analytics workspace. Um, updates is the same thing. If we click, if we if we go to the um, Azure Update Manager, for example, Azure Update Manager is is the uh, is a way that you can uh, deploy updates to your systems. When you look at the the machines themselves, I have seven machines here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is my Arc Enable machine. This is my this is a VM. You can see here, this one says virtual machine. This one says virtual machine. This one says Arc Enable Server, Arc Enable Server. So this right here, again, um, one single pane of glass, all my machines are showing up in one place. If I wanna use Update Manager, I can update them all from one central place. It does show up as a different, as a different resource type. However, I can manage it the same way. So all of that, again, is the same. You manage it all from one place, one central location. And, and the only thing that you, that you have to do is you have to deploy that Azure Arc agent. And do you have to do any of this stuff? No, once you deploy the Azure Arc agent, it shows up here. You don't have to enable anything. You don't have to enable monitor. You don't have to in install any extensions. You can just use it for inventory purposes, right? So you see what you have on-prem, what type of server it is. Um, this type of information is here, uh, but you can use other things. You can use policies. You can do monitoring agent. You can do network watcher. All of that is here. Any questions? Yeah, I've got one. Yes. Um, are you are you able to add Arc enabled servers into the recovery services vault uh, for backing up workloads, um, both at the server level and SQL database level? That is a good question, and I do not know the answer to that. To be honest. Okay. Okay. I need to. Find that's one out. of the current. Yeah, it's one of the current challenges we have. Is you know we have two different you know backup processes right for on prem versus. Uh, Azure SQL VMs, and so trying to centralize so, that, and this seemed like a good, maybe a good option for that. Yes, absolutely. So let's um, let me see if I understand. So you're saying yeah. go to the Azure Vault. Yeah, and can you add the workloads of those servers here? Let's. Let's give. Let's try it. Uh, let's do. Let's do local redundant. And create. We have a little bit of time anyway, so let's try it.
Okay, so let me see if I'm, uh, let's see your permission. Okay, that one is. Um, so backup in, is, uh, let me see if, uh, make sure that Azure database for Postgres. Is this what you're talking about, Melinda? Uh, no, so it'd be for uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Um, I think it looks a little bit different in the backup vault. Oh, okay. um, I think there's a different blade, the recovery services. Um, recovery, recovery services, services vault. vault. Yeah. Okay. Let me see, I have one here that I created. Let me try this one. Is it, uh, let me see. Probably not this one. Yeah, so if you go to getting started backup. Backup, okay. Yeah, and then um, probably both at the, so yeah, it would be Azure. Well, let's see, virtual machine, uh, SQL Server, and Azure VM. Yeah, so that would be the, the, the database backup piece. Yeah, this one right here, but it's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Now I'm not sure that first drop down. What's the on prem? Yeah. Uh, files and Microsoft SQL and SharePoint, Microsoft Exchange. Doesn't look like it. Hmm. What would, yeah, Microsoft SQL Server, what would that give you? I guess I don't know if any of your current VMs. I don't have, have server on it. Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't have any. But uh, okay. uh, <clears throat> I would have to look into it because I'm not familiar with it. To be honest with you. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Let me look into it. Unless Derek knows, but I, 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 I it's easy for me to test. But I, I will. I don't have it ready at this moment. So let me, let me look into that. That's a great Thank question, you. though. Yeah. Thank great you. Question. All right. So moving forward, um, so the Azure Arc, the other thing that it allows you um, to do is if you have on-prem Kubernetes clusters, you can bring those in, and they will show up here as well. And you can manage them as well from here. I'm thinking that maybe those SQL instances might show up here, maybe, Melinda. I, I, I will look into that, to be honest with you. I Because I focus primarily okay. on infrastructure, so SQL server sometimes is a little, um, a little out of my scope, but I definitely want to know. So I will I will find out. I appreciate and I it. Derek, and maybe Derek can communicate that back to you. So we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, Okay, so under the network watcher, let me go ahead and. Uh, I'm not familiar how how, I don't know how familiar you are with network watcher, but network watcher has this uh, co connection monitor. Connection monitor is a way that you can monitor your infrastructure, and one of the things that customers always ask is, how do I do a ping test? And so let me go ahead and. Do one really quick. I'm going to say that I'm going to use West, uh, West US3. When you set up a test group, you have to give it a name. And the source itself is where the ping is going to be initiated. Um, you have the choice of either a virtual machine, uh, and then once you, once you select virtual machine, then it's gonna give you all the virtual machines in the region that you selected. In this case, I have a few virtual machines. And if you notice here, it's gonna give you the option to either use the private IP address or the public IP address. If you select the private IP address, you can, you can just choose that. And that's gonna be your source. So the ping is going to start from here and is going to uh, ping test no space and the protocol is going to be ICMP and it's going to do it every 30 seconds and 
If you say if 40% of my test fails, then I'm gonna consider this a failed test. If my application requires a 100 millisecond round trip time, I'm gonna say that anything outside of 100 milliseconds will be considered a not a success. So just, you know, you can do that. You can click add test configuration. And now the destination. The destination can be an Azure, another Azure endpoint in a different region, or you can do non-Azure endpoints, which part of those are ARC endpoints. So ARC enabled endpoints, as you can see here, this is my ARC enabled endpoint. And you can select the IP address that you wanna use. Um, if you notice here, it says <clears throat> enable what? Enable network watcher disabled. Uh, that's because I did not, I did not set up the extension. I need to have that network watcher extension, otherwise I, I'm not going to be able to do this. But um, it, it it will not complain. It'll it'll do it. It's just the test is not going to complete successful. Um, so this is how I would use network watcher with an Azure Arc endpoint. Um, the source can also be an ARC enabled um, server. So I can initiate the ping from an on prem environment to Azure or the other way around. So, again, these are all Azure ARC enabled systems that I can use to be able to do this ping test. Um, the only requirement is that it requires the Network Watcher agent to be installed on the ARC enabled server. And again, how you install it, you just go in and you set up the extension. You go under the machines, the server itself, extensions, and you add the network watcher. Let's see if I add it correctly this time, if it'll successfully complete. Uh, next, and create. Didn't give me too many options actually. We'll see. Deployment to resource fail. Hmm. It's a lot of information here. No register resource provider found for West US three. Okay. So it seems to me like it's not available. I think it's not available in West US 3. So it is, um, it's probably part of that. So I can add it to a different one that is not in, uh, in West US 3. Um, any questions as far as the um, Azure Arc? Okay. So you saw um, how to enable it. Let me go back to this. So what I showed you is I showed you how to, uh, let me go ahead and go back here. I showed you this, I showed you how it shows up as a machine, um, as an Azure Arc enabled system. I showed you how from, uh, from the policies point of view, you can apply policies to those servers once you're on board, once you, you have them onboarded, you can apply policies. A policy typically is uh, based on compliance. If you say, I want a policy that all my systems must have the Azure monitoring agent installed, that policy, when it applies, it will install the Azure monitor agent on those VMs or on those on-premises uh, servers. So that's one of, one of the ways that you can apply policies. Uh, Network Watcher would be another one. So there's a lot of things that you can do with uh, policies. And, uh, excuse me, and then update. I'd show you how you can do updates from one central location. Again, update management manager will show you both VMs and ARC enabled systems. So you can manage them all from one central location. Um, you can set up, set them up in different resource groups. So one resource group could be Europe, another resource group could be uh, North America, you can do it based on location, you can do it based on business units, it's really up to you. This is just how you can separate the, the, the resources so that you're able to not only delegate uh, management, but you can also keep them separate. 
um, if you have a multi-tenant type of environment where you have customers, where you service a lot of different customers, you can keep them separate as well by using resource groups. Um, policies, uh, this is just how you can enable policies on, on, on those systems. So everything, again, all the infrastructure, all the infrastructure tools become available to those arc enabled servers for governance, security. You can enable MDC, which is the Microsoft Defender for Cloud on those systems. There's a lot of things that you have at your disposal once you arc enable system, once you arc enable those, those servers. Um, I showed you monitor, um, I showed you update manage, management. There's other things like Sentinel, Defender, a lot of other things that we didn't see, but once you have them in the Azure portal, you can take advantage of those as well. So a lot of different capability that is available. So I'm not gonna go through all this because it's a lot of information here that, you know. Um, as far as the um, the SQL is concerned, I will file, find out about the, 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 the management and I'll get back to you on that. And, um the the kubernetes is another one i think uh, derek is i'm not sure if he, if um if you covered kubernetes already but that's uh, kubernetes is another thing that you can bring into the azure arc if you have it on prem and you're able to manage it from one central location which is um what is showing up on the screen here and I will say, if you bring a Kubernetes in, then it also enables some additional Azure services like functions and logic apps to be able to, to run on-prem on your Kubernetes servers. Very nice, yeah. Then, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that, uh, Derek, just because my, I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit. Okay. So they, I wanna thank everybody for your time. And and if there's any other questions, please uh, you can ask now, or if you can, if you think of anything else in the future, you can send us a, a, a message and we can you know find the answer. Awesome. If anybody have any last minute questions for Freddie, if not, um, we'll wrap it up. Let Freddie rest his voice. Um, again, we recorded this, so we'll get it posted to our, our YouTube channel. Um, if you have any additional questions after the fact, feel free to reach out to Alec and I, and, and we'll make sure those questions get answered. Great job, Freddie. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Melinda, for the questions, Adam, and everybody for your time. Appreciate it. Stop the recording. Okay.